actually. Okay, this and is uh, today is April. What's the date? Eleventh. This is the Acton Board of Assessment review. We have uh, an assessment of, or a tax abatement appeal from uh, David and. David, the only one here. David All right. Smith. Da but David and Jane Smith. And David Smith is the one here. Now, did everybody in the board get the uh, the two pieces of information? I yes. have got an application here, but I filled the application out. All right. You um, see, this didn't go through the appeals process, uh, starting with an abatement process with us. They started with O'Donnell. Right. And O'Donnell granted them an abatement, but the abatement wasn't satisfactory, so they appealed, and that, that's the appeal through, and now, because they were granted an abatement, now they automatically have the right to go to the Board of Assessment Review. Right, the selectmen gave them, they approved did. the abatement. They did. So, and then we're the, yeah. and if that's the, 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 the difference there would be that in, property owners are allowed to apply within 185 days right. of the commitment, but assessors can initiate. In this case, based on conversations that we had had with these people as their agents for the assessors, we recommended that they initiate an abatement on this property. My letter kind of goes through the history on that, so gotcha. I'll, I kind of spell that out from the, from the, I'll say the informal process prior to commitment of taxes to the more formal mm -hmm. review after. So. You see that? You saw All right, that now before. The Smiths had asked also for an abatement on this second piece, but as I explained to them, and I, I did in my letter to you, because it had not gone through the abatement process, there was no way, but the, the date was passed for right. applying for an abatement. Do I understand the, the second piece, excuse me for interrupting, Mr. No, Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, the second piece referred to as the, as the peninsula? The, the peninsula, the... Um, well, the other piece is the peninsula, yeah. Okay. yeah the one okay, right, right on the water. The one so, that's labeled as 22. Okay. So yes. we're, we're, we're discussing lot 20 tonight. Yes. That's all that we're going to do. Would you, right. like, would you like to? Now, did you get the information, Nancy? I did, but I don't have it with me because I didn't think I was going to be able to make the hearing. <laughs> all right, now we do have uh, a checklist to go through first before we uh, formally get started. Uh, the application's all filled out, and everything's copacetic there. Uh, it was all done within a timely manner, within the time constraints. Uh, the person, uh, the person who filed the appeal, are they here? Or did the correct person, did the property owner file the appeal? Yes. Okay. Um, we didn't ask, you didn't ask for a true and perfect list. Uh, did the taxpayer answer any requests or questions from the assessor? There was a back and forth dialogue between All right. the property owners and- You're happy with the information you got from them? To this point. Yes, yeah. sir. fine, yeah. fine. Uh, and um, they paid their taxes on the property? That, I haven't. Have you paid uh, your taxes? Yeah, we always do. I'll ask her, but I don't think we owe you. But if we do, I'll find out. Well, the taxes have to, if the taxes weren't paid, we can't do anything. Well, we always pay our taxes. I, I didn't ask my wife before I left. All right. Well, then we're going to go by that you're up, you're up on the taxes. They're all paid for. I believe that's the case, right. but I, I, I'm sorry. I, don't, I should know, but I don't. I I should have checked earlier tonight yeah. too with the uh, tax collector, but I didn't. I didn't either, and I was. We had a busy day today. We're going to assume that the uh, that the taxes have been paid, so all the requirements have been addressed, and we're good to go then. And the way this will work is the the applicant will present their information to us, then the. Um, Town's agent, the assessor, will present his information. We'll ask questions during the process, and we'll decide what it is we we're going to end up doing. They got the abatement, but it wasn't as much as they thought they were due. That's basically where we're at. So, Mr. Chairman, would it be possible, um, prior to making a statement, this is the first time I've been able to see the assessor. Could I just ask a few questions so I have information I can then discuss we'll go off the record and give them a chance to yeah well, I don't mind no it could be on the public record I'm fine with it because it relates to the uh, the situation happy to do that yeah uh, it's all right with me 
Okay. Um, so um, I'd like to start. Um, we've um, been paying taxes on this property since uh, 1998. Um, and uh, we have never come to the town um, in that entire uh, history uh, asking for anything. Um, we've paid our taxes every year. And um, uh, so we're a fairly long-term uh, resident. Um, we've been here a, a long time. We've never asked for anything. Um, I'm not a professional appraiser, but um, I think that there's some uh, information the board does not have. I'm not sure why you don't have it. Um, and so what I'd like to do is to share information I think that's material to uh, your decision on, on our um, request for an abatement. So I, I would ask, I'm assuming that they have what you have, so the, uh, the uh, email of October 12th, I'm assuming you gave that to the board. I did not prepare no. your evidence for them. I oh. just printed it, copies of the emails oh. so that I would have them. All we get is... Yeah. You're unaware of that. Right, we just get the application, we get a, a, a picture of the property, oh. and we get that you you got the you applied for yeah. an abatement you got an abatement yeah. but it wasn't what you it wasn't the amount you wanted so you were seeking then a further abatement okay. through the board of assessment review okay. that's all that we get no problem do you would you, do you would, mind it's very brief could you read that to the board please which email are we talking october about 12. there's only one i believe on that day um so excuse me october 26th october 26th yeah, to, uh, Jane Smith. dear mrs smith well, actually, if you want to go back one, um, I'm fine with that as well. Um, the uh, one dated um, October 26th is fine. Hello, Jane. It was nice to talk with you. Chairman, uh, these folks do not have a microphone. They're not no, speaking into the I microphone. You might you want to move, move that. Can you, are you getting it, Virginia? Okay. If you like, uh, if you want to make it easier, um, Go to the one dated December 1. Yeah, I've got December. Okay, because you were copied on there. there. Yeah. Yeah, so go ahead. If you don't mind reading that, I'd be very appreciative. The one from Jane. Uh, dear Ms. Smith, I wanted you to know that I visited your vacant parcel yesterday. Mm -hmm. Let me just find um, that particular. Or if you have, if let me ask you, if you have your response regarding the fire chief conversation, I'm happy with that too. I've okay, dear Mrs. Smith, yep. Yeah. I mainly um, want the board to hear about the conversation with the fire chief, if you'd be so kind. Okay. Well. Happy New Year. Just, to, just so we, we're, what we're reading is emails that were sent back and forth between John O'Donnell and Jane Smith and ultimately involved other <coughs> town employees. Correct. Uh, the first email that he references was an email sent, and I have it dated December 1st. Uh, from John to Mrs. Smith says, I want you to know that I visited your vacant parcel yesterday. But if you want to go to the 29th, I'm fine. It'll cut time down. Yeah. Uh, the December 29th one is fine. December 29th. Yep. Dear Jane, I'd like to wish you a happy new year. That's really the one we, I think we can. I don't have those. All right. You don't? Well, the one I, I have, no, I, I don't have the dear Jane. Uh, I don't happy have that time. one. Let you can read, read yours. If you I, have uh, copies, why don't you go ahead and read yeah. it as part of your evidence? Yeah, no problem. No, no, but I didn't, I didn't know if you had an advance from the appraisal. Nope. That's why. Okay. Nope. Dear Jane, first I'd like to wish you a happy new year. Second, we have an informal review of the assessed value of your vacant lot. So my first question is, what is, I don't know what an informal review is. What is an informal review? Okay. Well, <laughs> there seems to be some confusion as to what process we were undertaking after the... It, my letter kind of explains this, but yeah. what... Prior to the commitment of taxes, right. typically when a company performs a revaluation, they'll send out notices to property owners, allowing for a brief period of time where they accept information informally, where people send us letters, emails, faxes. We also schedule hearings that we sit down and we meet with people face to face. That's the informal review. That's an informal review that Got gives it. a person an opportunity to discuss their value with us prior to the commitment of taxes. I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah. Then I also contacted the Acton Fire Chief and spoke with him about the hydrant and access to the property. This is our main uh, thing here. The Fire Chief indicated the town does not require that the gate remain unlocked. We have a gate... Um, uh, lockbox? Yes, ma'am? A knocks box? Uh, no, no, it's actually a gate where we put actually a padlock on it, okay, oh, for the road. We got broken in a few years ago. Um, he also said if they needed access to the hydrant and the gate was locked, they would simply cut the lock. I feel your ability to limit unauthorized access to the driveway is a big consideration. Okay, I'm going to stop there for a minute if I might. 
-hmm. So um, uh, two uh, winters ago, there were um, uh, five uh, snow plowing um, uh, down our driveway. And uh, during the summer, there were three checks on the uh, hydrant, which was eight. And then there were also two more inspections, which was 10, which means that we would have to cut the lock, I think I'm right, about every six weeks. Um, and given that the fellow owns your firm said, I feel your ability to limit unauthorized access is a big consideration, that strikes us as pretty significant, that every six weeks we have to put a new lock on. Without the lock, uh, we, and it will be in the police reports, we have been broken into. Uh, so we want to keep people off the uh, right away if possible going down into our, our property. So the first point I wanted to make was that I, I thought the board would have this, was that the uh, fellow who did the, um, I guess um, Mr. O'Donnell did the uh, computations? Well, John did them in conjunction with myself. Okay. I, I don't know if you saw this. We, 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 we spoke, yeah, we, we okay. spoke about this prior. So, so the first thing I just want to say is that um, this seems to be uh, where he's saying we think it's very important, but uh, the fact that it would be 10 cuts during the year doesn't seem to be considered. Um, so therefore, we can't protect our property if, in fact, the gate has to stay open. Um, the can second, I, oh, go ahead, sir. I, may I ask a question at this, or would you prefer not to? Or not, uh, never mind, go ahead. I, I just, yeah, 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 okay, this. okay. Because no, I think I, it's the I, same thing I'm going to Yeah, ask. yeah. Okay. Um, I know I sit on a real estate board in my town, and uh, I'll try to be as fast as, as I can. <clears throat> Sorry, I apologize. For I haven't done this before. Okay, so the second thing is um, we assume that the uh, basis of the valuation is that someone would buy that property and uh, develop it, or buy that property and put a house on it. I think that's pretty true, right? I asked the assessor. The basis of the valuation is the market value. Right. Okay. And, and, and there may be a number of variables that go to creating the value. Oh, no, no, One I of those it. might be the ability to develop the property. Right. But yeah. assuming that you uh, price ours like all the others and all the others already have homes on them, I'm going to say kind of, I don't know, appraisal, but common sense says you assume someone is going to put something on it. So we assume that this property is developable. Right. Yes. We got you. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yep. So, so this is really the heart of our argument. So. We all assume the property is developable. But the truth is, is that there are uh, four attributes that um, I don't think you've been aware of that make it very difficult to uh, develop it. So the first is the right-of-way. And do um, you know the history of the right-of-way? In what respect? I know this, um, you, I think Mr. O'Donnell thinks that the right-of-way uh, came through when we bought the property. I don't think he has any opinion on whether that was, when that was put there or not. Well, no, it wouldn't be an opinion because this is what's really important. So number one, uh, we bought the right of way from Brad Hayes and never bought the top lot. Uh, we paid $15,000 for the right of way to get down to our property because we used to come by boat for um, 70, 80 years. But we bought uh, the right of way to go down, okay? Uh, Mr. O'Donnell assumed that that's a driveway that if a person purchased that lot, they could use. That is not accurate. Um, that's why I want to ask that, because see, that's subject, and you can go in the, uh, the town, in Alfred, sorry. That is subject to a separate uh, uh, buy, you know, s agreement. Okay, that's just a right of way. Then, during the period that most of the uh, properties were sold up there, so that was like 77, 86, okay, I believe, about eight years, um, uh, Brad Hayes had that lot listed. It never sold. So the question is, why didn't it sell? Every other property that's on the water sold during that time, I think, except for one. You, you would know it better than I, but I kind of tracked it, all right? Well, the reason it didn't sell, the reason no one bought it, it's got a fire plug in the middle, okay? And This the, is lot 20. Yes, sir. This is lot 20, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, make sure they understand the right away going to your camp is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. I can show you in a movie just one yeah. second. I just want to get through this. So, so the point I want to make is that everybody that looked at that lot, and Brad Hayes had him, you can ask Brad, he had him out there, you know, all the time. No one bought it because they look at the fire plug. No one wanted to buy it. And they realized that there's a right away here, so they got a road bisecting their property. You all have a map, I guess, of the property, so you'll see where the right-of-way is. So there's a good chunk of this lot to the right of it, as well as to the left of it. Okay, so the first point we wanted to share with the board is that um, it doesn't seem like that has been addressed. But here's the, here's the important point. So since the appraisal company did not address that, 
how do you get into the property? Because the right-of-way is not part of that land. And the only way you get in is you have to build a driveway. And the driveway goes over a culvert into an area that's 12 to 14 feet below grade. And you have to come up the left side of the property. And any of you can go and look. You'll see there's a stream down there. It's uh, 12 to 14 feet down. It's all of that. I, I, when I eyeballed it, I thought it was 40 or 50 feet drop off. I want to be conservative. I can't tell. But let's put it this way. you got to build a driveway. Okay? Because the right of way does not come with it. Um, any, is there any disagreement so far? I'm sorry. There, it's, it's a little confusion on my part. You own the right of way? Uh, well, the right of way is owned separately. It so happens that So our, you would not oh, deed that yeah. with the transfer of this property? Actually, that's, that's, uh, that's the question I am I'm getting to. Yeah, hold on okay. a second. Yeah. Um, the right of way is owned by our family separately, but that's because if we elected to sell our camp, the owner, the owner can do what they want. That's why we did that. You have a right of way. Do you own the right of way? Those are two separate questions. Yeah, yeah. sure. You, in other words, this lot is physically split. In other words, right. these are actually two lots divided by a separate piece of property, and you have a deed to that piece of land. That's the question. Yeah, the top lot is split by the right of way, and we own that. You own the right of way. Yeah, you know. have a deed to the right of way? Um, I have separate deed to the right of way. To the right of way conveyed to me by Brad Hayes. Yes. So the the uh, land under the road, let's say it's 15 feet wide, that is owned by lot 22. Yes, that's right. Thank you. So these are two separate lots then. That's here. right. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Okay. That's that's, that's, that's the that's a relevant the question. Lot and the top lot are two. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Two separate lots. And you own both lots. But he owns yeah. he owns lot 20 yeah. also. Yeah. Right. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Am, I, am I correct there? I am. We're unaware of this. Obviously, the okay. tax map does not take well, it that way. Oh, okay. the, the real simple solution here is neither of these lots that remain are developable, so they should be combined into a single lot, and you should be assessed at a single lot. Excuse me for jumping to the <laughs> logical conclusion, but. No, they can't, they, they can't be combined because they're, they're, they're separate lots. They can be combined. Well, they well can, they're contiguous, waterfront contiguous lots. Right. We usually. No, it's not the same name, it's different names. No, but they can be combined by putting them under the same But name. you also stated that the No, we split the, them the because in the, in the event we select to sell our camp down below, we want to be able to do that. You said the land to okay. the left well, of the right of way is very Then we're back to where we were. Well, anyways, right? Hmm? Well, I'll, yeah, I'll comment. I mean, I have yeah. something to show you if, if you want. I, well, yeah. Why don't you go ahead with... Uh, Let me just finish if I can because I don't want to mislead you because I'm not... I want to make sure that I'm answering you correctly. Right. The, the three problems with the lot on top are that... A right of way bisects it. This lot number what? Let's uh, go two back zero. to two point. zero. Okay, let's. Which is the larger one? All right, so we need to clarify right. what, what we're talking about at this right. point. Two zero is bisected by a right of way. Okay. Number two, it has a fire plug in the middle of its um, uh, the water there. Okay, and number three, it's unlikely that a homeowner would place their house next to the right of way, so they'd have to go up on top of the hill. Okay, again, we've used yeah. that term right of way. Sorry. You, you are describing four separate parcels of land. This, including your peninsula here, there are four separate parcels of no, land three. that are physically divided. Three. Well, I own the peninsula, I own the right of way, and uh, it's different names, but the top lot is also owned. 20. We own everything. Okay, so you have one deed that describes the parcels of land on each side of the right of way. Yeah, yeah, there's this one, is there's a, one lot. That's lot 20. That's absolutely correct. Well, it's not one lot because you've divided it. If it's, it's not divided. If, if there's a physical deed for that, describing that as a separate piece of property, a fee simple deed that yeah, says this is a... 20 is one property. Am I correct? Lot 20 yeah. is one property. It so happens that, it's, that a right-of-way goes through it. Lot 20 seems to be labeled as a subdivision lot. As lot I, I think Tino it was created a, as a, a subdivision. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's correct. It was. But there's a there. We're going to have to get into that once right. he's done because, yeah, we're go ahead and finish up. No, no. So, so okay. So, um, so the other the other thing is that, assuming this lot has deficiencies, which which, you know, a reasonable person would say a lot that has a right of way and a fire plug has deficiencies. So our lot um, had the largest percentage increase. So. Um, between the last, it took 10 years for it to double, 
And then in this most recent evaluation, it went up by over 100%. And there's no other lot in that area that went up over 100%. And we don't understand that because of the deficiencies in the lot. That assumes that the original valuations were at the levels that they were in, should have been at. Again? Oftentimes when you revalue properties, you shift values and you may have one lot that increases more as an overall percentage of its value relative to the next lot because okay. of the assessment it had on it prior to that. So, so is it your position that the lot was incorrectly assessed originally? I am not making any judgments about the past assessment my our values are not based on the past values what I'm saying is that oh, I think you just said the value that, that it had before is, has no bearing on the value that we would assign to it presently the values that we assign to the lots presently are based on what the market dictates at this particular juncture this assessments that were done prior were calibrated from some other market that exists at a, at a different no point in time no problem. So things I, change over time no, I get it. so yeah. I would ask this question um, there was no reference to the low-lying wet area which takes a substantial part of the property, and I'm wondering um, why there wasn't. Well, I, I, I guess what, are you just kind of referencing variables that impact value negatively? Because if we were, to, we were to, you know, measure variables, I suppose we would have a list of 100 positive attributes and a list of 100 negative attributes to your property. It's a general assessment. We try to consider these things in, in their totality as they impact the property. Oftentimes we take and we make adjustments based on a couple of different variables maybe the combination of topography and right-of-way and the limitations of where the pro house would be limited would cause us to make X adjustment to the property but that's not specific have that's you got more area. information you want to present to us before we get yeah I do yeah. All right. so I Let's thought go. I would show you what it looks like so you can get a feel I'm for fine. it would that be helpful sure. okay thanks I think this will give you a sense too of um, what it looks like um, so you can see that um, it would be pretty hard to uh, build on this thing. Okay, I just did this about an hour ago. Okay, so this is the fire plug, and it's located about the center of the, uh, of the lot. And this is uh, what you see when you come down. You've got the fire plug here, and as it, it keeps going down. How far is it from the water? The hydrant? Right on the water. It's right on the water. Right on the the water. Edge. Oh, all right. That doesn't show. This right away also bisects this lot. So you've got a pretty good chunk of lot up over here. You can see going down to the water. That's to the right of the river. It's not usable, of course, because it's too small for the because of this road. And this is the road that the uh, fire department needs access to, but I think there are a few questions about. So if you come up, this right away. Sorry, heavy uh, here I can sympathize. <laughs> Okay. 
to the low lying area and then I'll turn my Number one, um, the, um, the owner of the appraisal firm in an email, and I'll provide you with the document, said that it would be a very serious issue if uh, we didn't have privacy. And I think we can demonstrate that the eight to ten visits annually that require the cutting of the gate removes privacy. Number two, um, I think we can demonstrate that the placement of a camp after we can certainly get an opinion from SACO or other authorities not subject to the right of way would be problematic. Number three, the reason it didn't sell all those years, well, I mean, believe me, Brad would have sold it if he could, was because everyone looked. They didn't like the fire plug. It didn't seem to be valid to them. And then number four, um, the uh, basis of the appraisal, therefore, is, is inaccurate, um, um, signif significantly inaccurate. And so um, we did retain a professional appraisal firm to assist us in this process. Um, and um, uh, I appreciate your time. Thanks. All right. Um did you want to go ahead and present the uh, yeah my, the town's case? Certainly can. The town's I, information. I prepared some paperwork, which is intended to try to. I, does he represent the town or his firm? The, the, no, it's one of the same. Oh, it is. Yeah, oh, okay. it's the same, right? Okay. Okay. <coughs> and uh, what I'll do is I'll simply read my statement and then. Uh, Thanks. Okay. Um, I'll simply read from my letter and then I'll kind of get into some of the counterpoints, I guess. Um, we have been asked to represent the Town of Acton concerning the appeal of an abatement granted to David Smith Trust for property located on tax map 103, lot 20. The assessor's granted abatement on January 12th, 2012 for this property, reducing the assessed value from 247831 to $234,787. Town of Acton conducted a general revaluation re of all properties for the 2011 tax year. All properties were valued in accordance with their market values. Prior to commitment of taxes and as part of an informal review process, all Acton property owners were given an opportunity to provide feedback about their values. The applicant provided a letter dated July 21st, 2011, but were out of the country during the time that hearings were conducted in Acton. The letter was reviewed and adjustment was made to take into account the limitations that were described in the original letter. I read the letter in August. It came through and as part of the review process, all emails, faxes, those types of things are organized, read. I read the letter. At that point, I understood what they were explaining. I did make a modest adjustment to the land value at that time. Um, I think I took 5% off at, at that time. Uh, after tax bills had been sent out, the property owner contacted the assessor's agent on September 21st to initiate a conversation about the property. They were not satisfied with the new value and wanted to pursue an abatement of the property. The, Smith were also, the Smiths were also concerned that the, and this is from the emails, the town requires that the gate be left open at all times for fire access, and this leaves the property vulnerable to unauthorized access. Donald O'Donnell contacted Fire Chief Ed Walsh about this and he was not aware of any requirement to leave the gate open. He suggested that they would only access the fire hydrant in an emergency 
and they would cut the lock if necessary. Because John and Jane had some dialogue about this property, John ultimately agreed to go out and review the physical characteristics of the parcel. The assessor's agent then recommended the assessors initiate an abatement to take into account the combined limitations of this parcel. So, John had some conversations back and forth with the property owner. This was during the period of time in which most property owners were applying through the formal appeal process by applying through an abatement application. This is a conversation that was going on. John agreed to go out and look at the property. After he looked at the property, he recommended that we initiate an abatement on their behalf to reduce the value an additional 5% from what we had originally adjusted on the property. Uh, that said, the abatement process is intended to correct substantial overvaluation. Case law goes as far as to say assessment must be manifestly wrong and there must be unjust discrimination. The town's obligation is to maintain assessed values that are fair relative to each other. A successful tax abatement request must demonstrate the property has been overvalued relative to other properties. The attached map, which is on page three, helps illustrate the uniformity of the assessments in the applicant's area. The burden of proof is on the applicant to show that the valuation is unfair. The presumption is that the valuation is valid. We conclude that the value is not manifestly wrong, nor have they been discriminated against when compared to similar properties. The properties are valued proportionally and equitably relative to other properties within active. A couple of things I'd like to state. Um, typically, when one applies for an abatement, they would provide the town with a credible alternate value. That value could then be compared against the assessed value to determine whether the property has been overvalued or not. We have not received any credible alternate value for this property at any juncture, only a list of the variables that they think impact its value. Has the uh, property owner been asked to supply that? Well, it is part of the abatement process. But where is, where is the... Uh, if you had filled the, out an application, you would have seen that that would have been what would have been asked for. Right, but I, I, we're prepared to do that if the town would like that, but at no point have we been asked to do that, and since we're novices to this, but we would be happy to do that if you would like that. Well, I guess my point is that as, as, as the property owner applies for an abatement, everything that they have should be presented to the assessor so that we can consider it as we make our decision. Well, given the fact yes. that there were five separate emails between the head of your firm and my wife, and there was ongoing dialogue, I would have thought that with your knowledge of the process that would assist, you would have said you really should do this. Well, I'll be honest with you. We, John and I talked about it. We talked about that property relative to some of the other properties in the area and where a home would potentially be located. That's a different issue. No, I was, I was down here today to look at the other homes in the neighborhood to see where they're located relative to where a home would be located on this property. Right. And what I'll suggest is that any home that you might locate on this property would be no further from the water than any one of these other properties that have recently been developed in that area. Well, and I'll have something to say about that. And where I agree with you totally is that when you look at this lot, it is a very appealing lot and looks like a typical waterfront lot. You and I have no argument. And where I also agree with you is that you have been consistent in your assessment of neighboring properties. Where we would disagree with you is that once there is a careful analysis done of our property, one would determine that the property indeed is quite different and therefore relative to the uniformity of similar assessments should not be in that category. All right, and, and have you got anything else that you wanted to? Uh, uh, well, if, if, just, if, if there are any questions about the map that I presented. Now, these, uh, these figures here, these prices, these are just- That is the land values. value for those, land values. for those properties. Okay. Yeah. There are uh, three vacant ones. Lot 20 is vacant, lot 26 and 27 are vacant. Lot 26 and 27, by the way, are 2.4 and 2.7 acres, and they have a higher value than the 4.1 acre subject property. So we have made some adjustments to the subject property. Yes, Tom? I'm still at a loss to understand what we are appraising here because if these, if these parcels, if lot 20 is actually described as three separate deeds under three separate titles or two separate deeds under two separate titles, then this needs to go back to O'Donnell. I think lot 20 is one. I, I think. Do I understand that there exists a fee simple interest deed for the right of way? The right of way then is not a right of way. It is a, it is a parcel of land separately owned for which there's a separate title. I, you know what? The truth, I don't know. I, I assume so, but I don't know the answer. 
But the well, I think that's a very relevant question. Here. It is. Because it may be, yes, but I wasn't we, we aware. We can't move that. forward without knowing that. Right. right. And I think 20 is the line in question, right? Right. Right. But our, our issue is with, the questions with understand. right of way. Right. You, to get to your property on the peninsula, we paid Brad you didn't have to buy a strip of land to get there. You could, on the deed for lot 20, it would have been marked off on the deed that there was access to lot is it 22, 21? 22. 22. There would have been deeded access to the lot. Oh, and and that's saying. all you need. You I don't need to saying. buy a Indeed. strip of land. Now, when you that's bought. That's my question. Yes, because you either have a. Right, if you divide, if that lot is divided, then it's a whole separate thing for these folks to deal with. Right. If, 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 if you just have a, if you just have a deeded right. Oh, I just got it. To access. Okay, as opposed to a separate parcel of land, yeah. that's something else. So your question is, does 20 have a deeded right to use the right-of-way? No. Not to use, no, to own. To Do own you right. physically own, own title right. to that piece, of what, that piece of land over which the road passes? You, who, who, which property pays taxes on that right-of-way? Is sure, it 22 I'm, or is it 20? I think sure it's 20 the camp now. down below, but I'm not sure. I'll find out. Well, okay. that's what we need to know because that's the one who owns that. So we that. Get in. Yeah. If, if it's, and if. It's assessed with 20. If it was, if he it's did. assessed for 20. It's assessed at, it's assessed in 20 right, right. now. Right, which means. It's assessed right. as part of 20. Yeah, right. do you have, um, if we have any language here or anything that would tell if us? We had, if you had copies of your deeds, yeah, you can see deeds. on your deed yep. exactly what it says, how you access lot 22. Yep, got it. And the, the right of way, that's what we'll call it, but it means different oh, things. I know what you're saying. The right of way on lot 20. Yep. Chances are it's a part of lot 20. It is owned by lot 20. Right. And you have access to lot 22 through lot 20. And your access is on a right of way. Now it can be anywhere. It doesn't right. have to be right where it's at. Yeah. It can be on the edge of the property. It can be down the no, middle. I get it. it can be coming from the other side. No, I get it. There's so that. you'll want to find yeah. out we'll tomorrow. Where, uh, you know, who owns the strip of land that you drive on to get to your camp and then yeah. also goes down to the highway. What I can tell you in terms of the history, if that makes any sense, is we never owned 20. We had the peninsula, and we bought the right of way to get to the peninsula from Hayes. Um, beyond that, I don't know, but I'll do the research. Well, who purchased lot 20? Who, who, you who folks owned own 20, yeah, right? Yeah, well, years 20. later, seven, eight years, years later, later, we bought 20. Okay. Uh, there's another issue that comes into this, too, because if those parcels have been conveyed separately, now you're in violation of subdivision law, which is a whole new bag of tricks. Yeah, I suspect uh, that we're within the law because we're pretty careful about any legal actions we take, and we had local attorneys work on that, legal counsel. Work. The, I know, I'll find that out. doesn't guarantee all the law. Yeah. I know, I know. We're, we're pretty, <laughs> you know. It would depend yeah. on we'll find out. Yeah. how many times the lots were split up within yeah. a five-year period. Right? And that, I can tell you that was un that's only happened once, if at all. Let me ask a couple more questions. Uh, we have. So I've got this. So you want to find out about that? I got that. We have the map here. Then this shows a sketched in uh, what we have called the right of way going to lot uh, uh, 22. Uh, do I understand? And I think uh, I recall this that there's actually a turn off of this right of way that goes to this hydrant, or is the hydrant directly accessible from what's shown on this map? Well, you are correct. correct. There is a, a turn off. There is a turn off that goes so down. So the to right that. away okay. goes to the house, and then there's a turn off that goes down yes. towards the house. And, and, and I do have one I other thing that. to add. Um, I don't remember. At one point, he suggested that the fire plug was in the middle of the frontage. Yep. Yeah. We have, from as part of the reval, we asked people to present this information about their insurance, mm -hmm. and on his insurance paperwork, it suggests that the hydrant is 31 feet from the line. If the frontage is 300 feet, that would suggest there's another 270 feet on the opposite side of that fire hydrant. Does that's it say which side of the line it's closer to? That's where it goes it's on the right. Is, side. This is the insurance paperwork for lot 22. Right oh, so the hydrant's way over It here. says that the hydrant is 21 feet away from the property line. That may be right. It may not be. but uh, It's the only but, open area. That's yeah. But it's, the, it's yeah. the only information I had to the location yeah. of the hydrant. Okay. Okay. It's right in the middle of the flat area. Okay. Now, let me ask another one. Um, with respect to hydrant, the hydrant access, yes. is there is there a stipulation in the deed that specifies that the fire department there's a fire department 
own it's actually the, town the town actually owns a right of way okay I to that legal term but within the, within the papers the town can have access any time it's choosing yes well the, the fire department can have that well the town can have access yeah. okay does the towns plow it in the wintertime yes constantly oh they yes. do they do okay. yes okay. i think we need i you think we need you maintain the road yes but the town plows yes so the town that would be your obligation as the owner of right that. Yeah. yeah but um, that went to the heart of the other issue which was we can't lock the gate i mean i don't want to come up very well, soon well that that's that that can be very simply uh taken right. care of right uh, yeah. a knox box can be purchased it's a metal box that would be welded or bolted to your fence frame with a key inside it the key would unlock your padlock the fire department and you are the only people that would have a key to open the lock, the Knox box. Mr. Well, the, Chairman, with well, all due respect, we left a key out three years ago, and uh, the plows actually took the bolus, or whatever you call it, and knocked it over. Because when the plows are running, they are not concerned with the niceties of the owner key situation. So I agree with you. The fire department, I think, would be respectful. But the contractors who were plowing, um, I had a lot of damage to repair that summer. So. Well, again, that can be addressed, and it's the town that plows that. Yes, it's not a no. Town. That's that's the, the private road. That's a private road. Yeah. That's right. That's David Langley. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, we don't know and who it is. Town. Town. Right. Right. No, no, but right. the right. town the town keeps it. Uh, I'm pretty sure the town does the plowing. No, I don't think. Uh, I, no, I can't it's, it's no. private. It's a. I know the the private contractor does the roads in there because they're all right. private roads. As far as that drive to get to the hydrant, I'm not exactly sure because again, we don't really have a copy of the deed to say exactly who maintains this. Is it the town? Is it the lake? Is it the association that you know, all these property owners? Is it the fire department? I know I've been giving Dave Tarbox money gonna, every three years to fix the road. Who is going to you know? Who is going to plow? The, you know the road. Will the town plow it because the town uses the hydrant? Or is it covered under the private contractor? Yeah. These are all things that, uh, well, I don't know what they're going to do for us tonight, but that's all things that you want to look into. And you're going to need a copy right. of your deeds, both of them, right. to find that out. But the main issue for the appraisals are here you've got this road running down to this hydrant. You've got the town fire trucks come in and hook up the um, hoses because it's a dry hydrant. You have to create right. suction right. and pull right. it. It's not a wet hydrant. Right. So you have regular fire department tests on that. Plus, you have individuals in the subdivision who also go down and make sure that the road is passable because we're required to make sure the fire department get down the road. So it's not a simple case of being able to have privacy there. So, you know, a person pays a quarter million dollars for a lot. They want to be able to access the lot. And since your head of your firm said it would be very important if that were an issue, I think we're prepared to provide documentation to this board that it is an issue. I think we're not quite there yet no, because the, the, the weight of that evidence would depend on what the legal position is with right. respect to access. I understand. Um, you guys can get out any time you want. That I do know. Well, I don't know the legal terminology. Um, I'm not sure that's true, yeah. okay, because these are private roads. It's the fire department in that okay. way. You guys the, can get at it. Okay. The fire department would normally have legal access in the event of an emergency. Other than that, they may not. So the question here may revolve around whether the owners of the land or the association have the right to deny access to or or to order the the guy who's plowing the road to stop plowing it, et cetera. In other words. Well, I understand. Okay. But Mattis make a comment. I'm not an attorney, yeah. but that would contravene the fire department's access, and therefore I suspect it's not allowed. Uh, now that that's different because the fire department responds under a different set of laws. Okay, okay? I, I'm not an attorney, but yeah. all I'm saying is there's a lot of action down there. Right. Yeah. Okay. A lot of action. Okay. All right. I have a question. Um, as somebody noted, there are subdivision uh, marks in the little circles on different lots, and on 20 and 22, well, on 20 there is one of those subdivision uh, marks. And there is none on 22. 22 was wasn't part of the subdivision. No. 22, 22 was already in existence. Was pre existing. Yes, ma'am. That you. was built in okay. 1919. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. All right. That was in your family yes, since, since then. How do you, you, your family has owned lot 22? 
since 1919? I know, sir, 1913, um, uh, I believe. All right. How did you access the lot? By boat. You had no deeded access across land? That's correct. Um, the Burbank family and my father-in-law uh, would negotiate once a year. It went on for 40 years, and uh, the stake moved a total of six inches. <laughs> <laughs> that was legal access. That was illegal yeah. access. No, we owned a lot on the other side of the lake, and we kept a boat there, and uh, we would come over by boat and did so until we got the right-of-way. And Is we did that because my mother-in-law was getting older, and we had to be, you know. Is there a dwelling on Lot 22? Yes, ma'am. There are two camps. I want to make it clear. They're camps. Right. Old, you know, they're camps. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And what is, what's the L O? Oh, little Ossipi. Little Never Ossipi. mind. Now I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's why the houses are up front instead of yeah. down on the lake and because there's tighter restrictions because the Ossipi. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So what is the... Um, setback for a little Ossipi zoning. I don't know. What they make is up back? Uh, well, I don't know, but the subdivision rule there is a 200 feet on 20. I know that. 300 maybe? No, two, I think it's 220 when what, it's set up. on the Saco River? Oh, Saco, I don't know. Where and the little Ossipi, yeah. It's little well, Ossipi. It's, it's they're, part they're, of the Saco River. The Saco River, right. Yeah, the subdivision was originally 200, I think, when it was originally done. Okay, Rich. 200 feet back from the lock, yes. from right. the uh, water line. There are yeah. two fairly new homes on lots 24 and 25, and I'd estimate that they're no more than two or 300 feet in off of the road. They're not that deep in there. No, no one was, was, You're asking off the water. Off the road. Off the road. Okay, but I I can't read the fine print on the side. What is what are the side measurements? I'm sorry. Uh, no idea. I can't yeah, read no idea. idea. None of us can None of us know. <laughs> um, it's a big mystery, Nate. Yes. Is that a bigger map, Dennis? It's maybe 441.15. Oh, I see. Man. That number's, it's kind of. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It, if I had a brighter light, maybe. 441.15 uh, on the uh, this left, side right on, here, on the right. side that abuts 19. Mm -hmm. And the measurement on the other? side that goes straight is 200 and something i i'm i'm seeing 370 but you know okay. again that's <laughs> right <laughs> don't trust me don't trust we're me all challenged <laughs> we're here. All kind of, okay we're squinting real hard <laughs> yeah really so it's a four point a magnifying acre, glass. Four point one acre yeah. lot. okay <laughs> I, I have to put up on my my computer screen and blow it up that way because it's a lot so, easier to do that way Well, here's a thought. I know we've talked about how the fire hydrant has negative impact. How do you think the insurance company would look at that fire location of that fire hydrant relative to the insurance on lot 22? Well, yeah, that's that. That's yeah, it would, my guess is it would probably be a plus. It's a plus, right? But the In, question is one of the, or one that might be located on lot 20. Well, it's, yeah, it's a double-edged sword, 20. though. I understand this gentleman's. Yeah. Well, I understand. I'm just. I'm, I'm, well, so I'm we're talking about variables that impact hold on, value. Hold on, hold on, but you're you're a professional, and I I'm uncomfortable with that kind of casual comment because we're talking about a lot of money. The fact is that scores of people looked at that and rejected it because of the fire plug. That's factual. Okay. Brad Hayes, we could get him. That's factual. There was a reason the property didn't sell. Okay. A lot of lots up there didn't sell at that point in time because Absolutely that was right. an economic collapse was right there. And Brad would Absolutely Brad correct. had a hard time about it. Well, let's say this. I know Brad too, but yeah. everything else sold first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Do you have some kind of uh, 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 what you think this property is yes, worth? Sir. We believe it is worth what it was originally valued at. Originally, and what, what's, what's that date? It was 100. Um, yeah, I was going to say, have you got a, a valuation yeah, what was the estimated? Because that should be on In the one of the letters, I believe question. they stated that it was valued at 115000 Yeah, that's correct. How much did they ask for? The, the past valuation on the property was 150000 yeah, We believe this is, it's this worth $115,000. This in the previous value. Yes. And is that what you feel it should be valued at one hundred and fifteen? Yes, ma'am. We do. But in two, 2011, it was about at 285, 285 nine. I'm sorry. Is that what it says? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. No, we started there. We're, we're at 234 now. Well, we, 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 we were prepared to make a case that the, that the doubling was um, not a reasonable um, 
approach given all of the circumstances. We believe it's worth $115,000. We believe that all of the factors that <coughs> we've been discussing you know, cause that to be the case. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I am, may I? Yeah, go ahead. Without knowing what we're appraising here, which, which means, which is another way of saying, we don't know who owns this land. Or, I understand oh, I whether it's one deed and whether it has a right of way across well, it, which is, a, which is I, whether the fire department has a deeded right of way across this, who's plowing and who's da doing damage, all that these issues. Okay. So I think we need to know, we do know that the road is private. That was part of the, that, that's correct, right? Road uh, road always road has road been road private, road. Yeah, right. which means it is, right, which yeah, means right, it was, is, 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 is probably, and I'm not saying for certain, but I have reason to believe with some degree of certainty that it is plowed and maintained by a private contractor hired by the association, okay? okay? Um, so the town does not plow it, okay? The next question I have is, you as an owner of this land, do you have the right to instruct the, the, uh, the or through the association, do you have a right to stop this plowing if it's going on? Or do you have a right, for instance, to deny access to the fire department except in an emergency? I mean, the fire department's going to go there in an emergency in any case, whether they have a right or not, uh, legal. But, um, you know, let me answer this as I might. I grew up in a small town. Yeah. If the fire department wants to test the hydrant, I don't want to be a jerk. I want them to be able to test it. You know, they're doing the right thing. Uh, for my neighbors as well as myself. So the um, um, last thing I want to do is, is go up and tell the fire department they can't do something they think is helpful. That's fine. You know? when, when, when was the fire plug put in? When was that installed? When the, when when the subdivision sub was, was a, It came in with the original 80s, subdivision. Yeah. Like late 80s. And that was, we were, we were on the planet. That board. was before you purchased right the land. before me. You were yeah, yeah, yeah. when George Mann was, George Mann was around. Yeah. Yeah. All right. How yeah. many times have they used it? The, the, the importance of whether this is divided or not is very significant to your yeah. property value. Right, That's right, a whole right. bunch of things. I mean, yeah. yeah, I think we're going to need more information yeah, okay. if we want to. And if you have that information, the proper the place to start with is Dennis, because I don't think he's aware. No, I, that's what I said at the beginning. I, there's information that doesn't seem right. to have been also coordinated. I'm happy to do that. Yeah. yeah. I think that. No, we that, have no enmity toward them. We just want them to see the details. It's all about details. You know, it's about facts. And um, I'm more than happy to give it to him. And and all of that is all of that is uh, all of that is very relevant to this proceeding. I think. Do we have a copy of his deed on record? Probably, but we may not have a copy of the right of way. I get you all we that. Have, well, well, we, have the the have the we have all the subdivision fire stuff. We have to go to the subdivision that. stuff to see what the fire department. Yeah. Right. 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 And, the right. and what the association who maintains yeah. it. Right. So I remember so the fire forward. department had access to that. I mean, that I do remember. Right, right. Well, yes, it does, because that was part of the subdivision, subdivision regulations. Process, right. They well, had to allow make one point a, an, um, you, you all run a planning gun with George Mann, and they yeah. pick that site for a reason, because there are other places you can drive to. Yeah. yeah. Okay? So they pick that site, and I think at the time, um, I'm not going to, it's not fair to quote someone who's not here, but... I know that, that that was not considered the most desirable site because if you, you all remember being on the planning commission, that is a sand pit that you all shut down. So as you look at our lot, to the left is a sand pit. You all stopped that, the excavation. So, I mean, the truth is I think that's why our lot was chosen because it certainly was not a top of the hip parade. And I wouldn't expect the appraiser to know that either, but that's the fact. The other point I would make you before going any further, and, and I... <laughs> I understand why you've done it, but if you want to significantly reduce the value of this piece of land, the thing to do is join them in one piece. That's the easy way out of this. Yeah. Then you're then the value. Of, I don't know why that was. Right. I mean, I, I don't know. If you combine those right now and take it to him. Right. I don't want to play games, though. I mean, I believe there's some inherent deficiencies in the property, and I would rather stake out the right side, you know, make my case I, first. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised that they're, they haven't been joined already because that's the way that it usually goes. Right. I think they were and then I think they were split the, out. The, the subdivision regulations say if the law is substandard. Right. Yeah. 
you know, not big enough, not meeting regulations. Oh, right. oh okay. I think or we split them because of our children. Yes. It's a substandard law. Well, the, 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 well, if one was back there, so it's a division. But Lorraine, that's what he's stating. As soon as you, as soon as you, well, I'm not sure. Well, I would have a question. If, if you can join a lot that is not in the subdivision with a lot that's in the subdivision, doesn't that need to go before the planning board? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I think that I mean, would be an automatic that's before the planning board. We're forgetting board, right. too is that yeah. lot twenty two is not part of this subdivision. Right. Mm -hmm. So and it's not on the same deed. That that's yeah. kind of yeah. We're yeah. That keeps messing us up. I think a little bit. But I think that automatically, if if lot twenty could have been, if they had wanted to, at the time, joined to the. Lot right. 22. right. Well, and certainly lot 22 is is substandard because it has no uh, right. no access, no direct and, road access, and it's and, and probably its its boundaries are. Did you did you are, you know pursue it, the matter yeah. of getting no a road subdivision? Fringe, no nothing on that lot on lot 20. Did you pursue getting a subdivision there? Is that I'm not sure what that means. So I'm sorry. Well, this is, that's needed for a subdivision. No, no, no. no. This is the whole subdivision. The whole, the whole ball of wax. Farm. This is one of the lots this is, yeah. in the subdivision. That's one of the lots in the okay. subdivision. Right. 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 Yeah. But he, that's following the yeah. subdivision. No, he's not proposing to subdivide okay. this. No, 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 no. I don't do it. No. Um, yeah. It would seem to me that I don't know that, that we have enough uh, credible information okay. to make any kind of determination. Okay. And I think Tom brought up a good point in that there is probably some more stuff that you could bring to the assessor to help them in looking at the property. Okay. Uh, and we need, we and need that three would D's. certainly be a copy of your any deeds that you have. The rights of the fire department in the town. Right. I mean, that I, would I, be I, in the deed in the homeowners association, whatever, right. however that's written up. Happy to do it. Okay. Well, and, and the current appraisal would be quite helpful because it would be instructive to see how appraisers are handling the restrictions that they are suggesting exist here well we're not suggesting Relative they exist. To a lot we don't know that those they, types of restrictions we don't know that they exist though that's right. that's that's well, an issue that's the issue that we have to answer right. I get it because we don't know exactly who owns the right of way how it's set it. up if, if we knew all that then yeah we, we don't have well, I get it. Information. And, and our position will be I have to get this but our position will be that their acceleration was did not take into account all of the elements that are important but I, I know we have to do it to get you more information and I think the information, if you have that information, it needs to go to these folks first. They're the, they're the well, I would simply ask that I'd be allowed to present the information simultaneously to the appraiser and the, and the committee by mail. Well, it goes to the appraiser oh, and he has to first. take action oh, I got you. before okay. it would go back to us. If okay. I no have that well, my, one of my concerns to coming into this was that there was reference in this application that there was an appraisal. So I was considered. I was. I was concerned with the premise that I might have evidence that was going to be presented this evening, that I hadn't had an opportunity to consider, which was one of the things that we were kind of a little apprehensive about. The process of seeking an abatement requires that you first establish that you've been overvalued. To do that, you have to establish a credible alternate value. So if you don't establish that you've been overvalued, then none of this discussion that we're having about the variables even matters. And well, all, except except to. Except to seek justice. I mean, as excuse me, no. we have to terminate and deny tonight. Well, you have to adjudicate I, I, based I, on what's presented I think, to you. Yes, right. I think right. we have to do that. Well, we have more that, information. Well, um, okay. I don't want to waive my rights. Okay. okay. I would just I would just make a reference to the Usum versus the Town of Raymond case where this kind of discussion occurred. We understand if we, if we have to come to a conclusion tonight, uh, mm -hmm. we have to deny. We don't we don't have the information to, to move forward okay. or to make any judgment with respect to the value of this land because we don't know who owns it. Well, uh, yeah. I don't know. But but do you have a credible a credible valuation of the property, or you just want to go back to what it was? That's it. That, that's your whole... No, no, it's not casual. That's not... Is, what's it based on? I mean, and you got something that's based on... I mean, that, that first valuation was done when? How long ago? The most recent valuation was done... No, no, done no. How, the 115, when was that done? 2007, correct? No, that goes no, on. That goes away. Well, last year, more than 1,000 or I thought it was around 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 
Oh, well, yeah. The issue that our family will, will, will share is that we don't believe that the site is suitable for a dwelling for all the reasons we've stated, and therefore the valuation which you've come up with is based on the commercial value of the property, what a buyer would pay. And we believe that a buyer would not pay more than that. Well, well if that, if, excuse me. Go ahead. If that's the case, then the logical thing for you to do is combine these lots if you don't believe it's buildable, because your your assessment on the whole parcel of land isn't going to be much more than your assessment on lot 22 right now, land value. Right, land, I, I mean, it's going to be assessed as extra land. What is the value of extra? I understand, but my goal is not to, my goal is to equitably challenge the basis of their findings with information that was not presented. Right now, it, it is the town considers it to be a buildable lot. No, I know you do. So yeah. you would have to prove to us uh, why it's not a buildable lot. You'd right. have to, you know, it, it doesn't have enough road furniture, it doesn't have this, it doesn't meet that, so on and so forth. Right. As far as having a driveway through it and a, a dry hydrant, that does not preclude it from being a buildable lot. Right, it's no, I understand. considered a buildable lot. Right. You have to show us That's proof that it is not, that it doesn't meet state town or state requirements to be a buildable oh, okay. lot. Mr. Chairman, assuming, fact, assuming it's a buildable lot, that, aren't there, the it is a, as far as the town is concerned, no, it's a question, but aren't buildable lots come in different more. values? Yes, they do. Okay, so, so we would make the case that were it a buildable lot, the various impediments would cause it to have a valuation significantly below what the service has claimed. And we would just need to see uh, what, how you reach that, you know. We understand. How, uh, how many thousand did you take off because of a driveway? How many thousands would you take off because there's a dry hydrant? We want to, you know, we're going to, we need to see some other than we lower. like what it was in 2000. It right. shouldn't be any different. I'm not making that casually. Our contention is that the appraisers valued the lot based on the comparable properties. The assumption that our property was comparable is incorrect. Therefore, we do not believe that the basis of the valuation should have a subtraction methodology applied to it, but that indeed the original basis should be questioned in its entirety. You may be correct. You may be correct that I'm not going to challenge that. I, I don't know. But in order to get to any kind of conclusion, we have to I we have to we have to understand these issues. Well, I would I'm respectfully sorry, I, request a continuance if possible. But I thought you. the gentleman with you was an appraiser. He is, but as we're going through this, I think it's clear to all of us that I need more information. Is that accurate? Or well, no, I mean, did, did do you appraise land in this area? For thirty years. Oh, did you come up with some kind of no, appraisal? No, what I did come up with yeah. some percentages that I think should be adjusted, like you mentioned. And but if you give me five minutes, I'll go through what I have quickly. Well, I I don't know. Is that I'm not well, sure it's relevant? We, to it. It's irrelevant. Unfortunately, the, we probably uh, don't have question of the road enough ownership. information. Um, that may be something that you can present when you present the rest of the information. But I we're seriously going to need to see a deed. We're going to have to know exactly what the makeup of this R O W is. Understand who actually owns it, who pays taxes okay. on it, and does Lot 22 own it outright, okay. or do they just have access Across over it. Lot 20 right. on the right of way, which again, can be anywhere. I understand. And Mr. Chairman, I'd respectfully ask one last thing. I've heard on three different occasions tonight the appraiser state that there are certain processes we should have followed did not follow, and I apologize to the board for that. I would also ask that any correspondence that the appraiser also has in their possession between the property owner and the appraiser be turned over to the board so the board is aware there has been dialogue back and forth on a number of subjects and it doesn't appear that we simply have ignored um, the process because that's not our intention. No, I, I think we realize that, that you guys have been talking back and forth because the, the first two abatements, if you want to call them, that they made were just through the two parties dealing with each other right. outside of oh, right. an official notification to the selectmen right. until they finally came up with the, the, the last five percentage. Well, Mr. Chairman, in all fairness, we were discouraged from coming, and I wasn't going to say that, but in the, in, and I would be happy to show you the email. 
and the email states that I'm sure that the board will agree with my findings. Now, I've been on real estate committees in towns, and I understand when the consultant says that, what they're saying is, look, if you go before the board, you're going to lose. So I am very sensitive to the fact that all of the information that, that, the, that the consultant gets, you get as well. Well, I think that you'll find that we'll he was referencing the original assessor's meeting where, oh, the assessors, where, where we make a recommendation to the assessors and then they vote to either approve or deny our recommendations. Well, I like transparency. I like everything well, Yeah, but that may be... I would suggest that if John was su suggesting it wasn't necessary to come to the meeting, it would have been that meeting. That's not because what he Because his like attendance at this meeting email, is absolutely required. I'd be happy to quote from Mimi on the email says the following. I have no reason to believe that the board will disagree with my findings. Now, well, all was, adults, I mean, well, of course he, he wouldn't was, have any reason to believe that's why he would have asserted, right, He was right. talking to the, that was the select board he was the assessor, talking to. The board of assessors. Agreed. Right. The, well, not us. With all due respect, Chairman, I simply ask that anything the assessors get, you get. And I'm happy to provide everything I get. I like it all out there. I, 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 think, I think we're off the issue here. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, we're dealing with, we're dealing with hearsay and, and conversation that is Well, I have to go back relevant. and do some research uh, and present it, and I'll do that immediately. Right. Okay. And, and I don't exactly know if we can, you know, grant a continuance, uh, if we would have to make a decision tonight, and if we made a decision, and if we did not grant an abatement, do they still have the right to appeal to us again, or do they have to then go to Superior Court? They've got to go to court. Yes. To court. So you deny, so the next step is to go to court. So, so I think what we right should to do continue continue is... Unless you continue. Right. But <clears throat> once again, that that's um, a decision. Well, I mean, you know, we can let... If we, uh, if we grant a continuance tonight until everybody gets more information... I'll do it right away. They're not going to be upset with us. O'Donnell's not going to be upset with this. No. Who's going to be upset with this? The court. Who cares about that? Right. Because they're not going to bother us. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I think we'll we ought to just grant a continuance <laughs> until both parties, you two, have all the information back and forth that you'll need. Good. And O'Donnell would then see what you guys want to do. And if you think that there's something valid you can bring to the selectmen, you know. Yeah, well, again, it would be incumbent on what we what we right. find out. And, and, then, and then we'll go through the process. But Happy to do it. You know, and, and again, yeah, you still have the option of combining good. these two lots, and, and then your assessment's going to be like, the, the value of the, of, the, of the lot 22. Oh, no, no, I understand. I understand. But, yeah, but I mean, for us, it's a bigger, bigger issue at stake here. You know, we've been here since 1919, yeah. and, I, and we believe strongly that a lot of our points are accurate. And I don't mean to be pig-headed, but, you know, this is ours, and we pay the money, and I just think this was not, the, it was not an accurate depiction, and I want to at least pursue that course first with uh, all due respect. That's fine. I mean, so is the board in agreement that we grant a continuance on this Abatement before the Board of Assessment Review until both parties have gotten all their information back and forth. When's your next meeting? Well, it has meeting? to be uh, between them because yes, we don't, we don't have, have any more action to take. No. This is between the owner and O'Donnell. Right. He's got to furnish proof to O'Donnell right. that would justify O'Donnell right. making a larger abatement. Right. See, I don't believe O'Donnell had enough information. They certainly didn't have the information that we're looking for tonight, like a copy of the deed, to know exactly what the story is with the right of way, right. and or two rights of way. There may be two rights of way. Yeah. There. yeah. So, yeah, I, I think. Yeah. yeah. And we'll commit to this board that we'll have it done within uh, the next uh, twenty-one the days. The question is: on, the real question on the right of way is, what rights will the owner of lot twenty have to use that right of way, if any? Right. Their position. They're not, if they have any control of it, they will grant no right to anybody else if, for Lot 20. Well, if, if, they, they, if, they, if, if they, they own it, they can do that. If they only have a right away, they can't do that. Right. But right. I don't know well, what that's, that's the un, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the unknown. But that might be more complicated because if you have a, a piece of land that's owned separately in the middle of that subdivision lot, that's I nice. guess you have a bigger problem on you. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, and that's... Let me get the facts <laughs> first before yeah. we... You know. So I don't well, we're doing I, I would be very surprised if, in fact, that's what happened because that seems to be kind of a shape. Well, 
Right. Well, I think that the, when the subdivision Shaky. was in was the planning process, that they wouldn't have, 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 have the planning board would have you know, made the provision for Lot 22. What's that? I said, I believe when they were in the planning. Right. Yeah. Lot, uh, okay. The planning board would have made a provision for Lot 22. I, I remember that. I was on the planning board then. That was. Why would they if it wasn't part of the subdivision? Because, no. because, because, because they are blocking it now. Because you had an opportunity maybe to get to the road. Right. right. You didn't want to lose it. There was you waiting know, for access. Law, the law is that you have to have access. But water access is illegal access, Lorraine. What's that? Water access is illegal access. So boat access. Oh, so only boat access is yeah. illegal. Only yeah. to an island. That's yeah. not an island. That's a peninsula. Right. Oh, right. It's, it's, it's drawn on the maps as if it is a yeah. right of way. Yeah. Which, yeah. that doesn't mean anything, but it's... it's right. Yeah. right. Okay. And so, you so. have to see of the verbiage. I mean, we own a piece of land. Nobody is paying taxes an on the right of way. unlocated right of way that Maya Butter has. Hmm. So, okay. so the, the other <laughs> so. issues are... The other issues are who does actually plow the road, who's responsible for plowing the road, and, who has and the rights what over the deeds road? what deeds have been granted to to use the road. Yeah, yeah. What the subdivision, right. uh, you know, the homeowners association. Yeah, the homeowners association. Or what their front. rights I, are. There's as two far different as that groups goes. down there, so I don't know. Which yeah, this would be the rich this. people, I'm guessing, but I'm not sure. I mean, we belong to the other side for. And you'd Forever. have to look at the original subdivision. Well, you, you'll have a copy in, all, in your deed when you bought lot 20, all the information be in there because you're, you're paying a percentage of road maintenance and I'll go down for in the morning, pull upkeep up. and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, so I, anyway, I think we're going we're gonna to sit back and wait for you guys to yeah, happy get to all do. your Good. stuff back and forth. Okay. Do we have... And um, at some point then O'Donnell will let us know what decision they've come to and that could be the end of it you guys could be happy with what they end up Understood. deciding Understood. or it could be they could maybe not make it enough and then you want to go through the abatement process Understood. and as long as we're continuing this it's as far as i'm concerned it's still going to be okay to bring to us a month, two months, whatever it is down the road. I think we all want to wrap it up as fast as possible. We'll move quickly. Me. Oh, yeah. also, I, I'd suggest that we're in the abatement process, that the original abatement was granted, and we're now in the appeal of that process. So right. anything that we're continuing we, would, we, would, we would, if, if we agree, we would come to you, this board, say, look, after we review what he's brought us, right. we would recommend that this is where we end right. up right. now. Right. 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 But it still has to be a decision of this board. And, and just correct. so to make it clear, we would, we would, we're going to be retaining uh, an appraiser for that conversation because I, I don't have as you said this wasn't your first rodeo this was mine yeah but it's not his so you know we'll have to talk um can i can i propose uh mr chairman that i assume we're about to make a motion to continue this uh and i would propose that we set a, de a deadline to for the continuance to be on or before to continue until say the first of june or something of that sort is that is that going to give everybody enough time? Yeah, June? Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll. In other words, if, if, yeah. if nothing happens between... Well, you don't between... schedule a meeting the first week of June. No, no, I'm no, not no. going to be around. No. <laughs> Come on. Just, I already know I'm on vacation. I'm not on it. So. Just that we're notified by the 1st of June. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And uh, then if we if nothing happens between by the 1st of June, then we get together and just formally, formally deny it. But I assume that something is going to happen. Okay, thank you. And your offices are um, where... Where you, what do you need? Your offices are where? where I'm just thinking. New Gloucester. Where are you? Oh, New Gloucester. Uh, was, that, was that a motion? Who's going to uh, make a motion? I will. I'll, I'll make, okay. I'll make a motion <laughs> that we grant a continuance to this Board of Assessment uh, uh, hearing uh, until the uh, 1st of June of this year. 2012. Right. And if we haven't heard anything from it's automatic. Them, we, we we have we act then anything? after that, right? Nothing. That doesn't have to be in the no. motion. We just act. So I assume that what will happen is, is there a, a second? fairly quick time. Second. You'll I'm going to do my discussion. discussion. Do right away. Yeah. I won't be in the office. All in favor, aye. Right? No problem. I'm going to go to. Who's second? Dan. Dan. Okay. We're all set. So, I want to thank the board too for listening. I appreciate it. Sure. Thank you sure. very much. All right. We understand. Yeah. Thanks. Good luck. Have fun.